Republicans head toward a convention in Tampa with a couple of obstacles named Aiken and Isaac standing in the way. Welcome to DC Bureau, the Wall Street Journal's online political show. I'm Jerry Side. We're joined today by one of the real pros in American politics, Ed Rollins, who by my count has been involved in Republican politics since 1972 and who earlier this year ran Michelle Bachman's presidential campaign. Ed, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Hey, uh, if I count right, Ed, I think you've been involved in conventions since 1980, I believe. Is that I, right? Actually, I went to 72 and 76, too, so I've been, been around a lot of them. Longer yet. Okay, so let's pretend for a minute that you're in charge of the Republican universe and you can do whatever you want at the Republican convention next week in Tampa. What are you trying to accomplish and how are you going to go about doing it? Well, it clearly has to be Romney's show. There can't be any sidebar, no distractions. Obviously, we had the Aiken distraction this week. Uh, but next week has to be all about Romney. Everybody has to talk about Romney. It can't be Ron Paul. It can't be Donald Trump. It can't be Newt Gingrich. It can't be Santorum taking any play. Uh, you've got a couple of featured speakers, uh, uh, Christie and, and obviously the young Senator Rubio from uh, Florida, and they, they will be big attractions, but it's got to be about reinforcing the Romney message. So how do you handle this distraction? Todd Aiken, the congressman from Missouri who talked about legitimate rape uh, this week, uh, kind of cuts badly for Republicans if that becomes the storyline as you suggest. How do you get around it? Well, first he's not going to the convention, which is good because otherwise there's 15,000 reporters with no story to tell and they would find him and basically make him a story. Uh, you know, I think the key thing is you just keep moving forward. The, uh, the, the, the platform that relates to abortion has not been changed in the last three three cycles. Uh, it, it, it doesn't mention rape, incest, or any of the rest of it. It mentions a constitutional amendment. And I think you focus on the economy. That's what people want to talk about. Uh, you tell the Romney story as best you can, and you, uh, you reinforce that with your surrogates who talk in terms of the, of the mission of the Republican Party to get the, get the, the country moving again and moving forward. But the, the other problem for Republicans is that the Aiken story takes you not just to social issues rather than the economy, but takes you to an issue that where Democrats would love to exploit what they think is the gender gap that works in their favor, the advantage uh, among women. Uh, maybe that's not true, but you worry about that? Well, I, you always worry about, uh, you know, there's controllables and uncontrollables. Uh, the biggest uncontrollable right now is, is Isaac. That's an act of God. Uh, we have to make sure that acts of men don't basically distract from the Romney message, which has to be the economy. And is it, it, uh, it possible to do that in a very concentrated way with net networks scaling back steadily their coverage of this convention? There won't even be primetime coverage on the networks Monday night, for example? You have to be very, very focused. And, and I think the key thing is you've got to make sure everybody stays very disciplined. Uh, the speeches are usually reviewed or written uh, for, the, for the people that are making the, the surrogates that are making the speeches. And obviously, you make sure they stay within the, by, the, the, the guidelines. It's, uh, it's not their show. Again, it's, it's Romney and Ryan's show. And uh, you just got to be very strict and very tough. You know, presumably one of the Romney campaign goals here is to use this convention to humanize Mitt Romney, to personalize him, to make people, frankly, like him a little bit more because there seem uh, there seemed to be a, a, a liability gap. Uh, is this does it matter this year whether voters like a candidate or not, or is this a different kind of year? I, I think in one sense it's, it's always important to like a candidate, and obviously there's there's a there's a gap there that uh, people do still like Obama. It's the only reason he's still a viable candidate, I think. Uh, uh, Romney, for whatever reason, has not quite been able to project the warmth and things that people that know him well uh, feel. Uh, hopefully this week will help. At the end of the day, this is a very polarized election. Uh, it, it's going to come down to anywhere from 9 to 14 states that are going to be the, the real targets. It's almost like gubernatorial races as opposed to a national election. It's 34 states that will never see a television commercial or a visit from a president or vice presidential candidate. Uh, at the end of the day here, uh, uh, you know, you've got to make sure that, that the message is what the people want to hear, and that's all about the economy and jobs. And if, if you're running this convention again, how do you capitalize on the assets that Paul Ryan brings to the ticket? You don't want it to be his show, as you said, but you want to maximize his assets. Well, I think the key thing is, is Paul will get stronger as he goes through this campaign, unlike Sarah Palin, who electrified the convention four years ago and then three years later, three weeks later, sort of faltered. I think he's going to get stronger. I think he's extremely substantive. Uh, you know, you don't want to make it boring. You want to make it uh, basically uh, the concepts that you're laying out there are, are uh, not entertaining in the sense, but people are paying attention, and, and at the end of the day, it's got to be very substantive. 
but not boring. And I think the key thing is budget, economy, all the deficit talk and what have you uh, is, is troubling. Uh, but if you get too much into numbers, as many members of Congress sometimes do, uh, they talk in Congress speak, then, you know, people don't understand that. This has to be a very simple, here's the problem, here's what we're facing, here's how we think we can fix it. You know, Ed, you understand the, re the conservative wing of the Republican Party pretty well. And a lot of people have said, mostly in my business, frankly, that Mitt Romney had a problem with conservatives and Paul Ryan was going to help him address it. Did Mitt Romney have a problem with conservatives? Well, he did. He did certainly through the primary process. And, and even though there, there was no significant candidate that rose up to challenge him uh, realistically, uh, uh, Governor Perry may have if he had the resources in the campaign organization, but basically faltered in the debates. And Santorum was sort of the last man standing. But I think what happened is there's such an animosity towards uh, the president and the president's policies uh, that even those conservatives that weren't basically true Romney lovers uh, basically uh, have come to support him. Uh, both parties have their base uh, intact. Uh, you don't see any defection. And you really see, uh, you, unlike any election, modern election that I've seen other than probably 2000 and 1960 when I was a high school kid, uh, you'll never have an election as close as, the, as these two. Uh, uh, I mean, this you're not going to see much movement. Uh, you're, not, you're not seeing any bounce because people who are for Obama are not moving and people that are for Romney are not moving. So, you know, my sense is the traditional 10 or 15 point bounce you sometimes get out of a convention isn't going to happen. The two or three point bounce that sometimes you get with a VP choice really didn't happen. And it's really going to come down to the trench warfare in those eight or nine states that are going to make a difference. So we shouldn't spend a whole lot of time next week or the week after looking for the convention bounce uh, you know, after either it, convention. It, it, I think it would be difficult to get a bounce with the uh, Democrat convention following immediately afterwards. What a convention gives you, I mean, they're sort of outdated, and, and, and I don't think anybody would really miss them if they weren't, uh, I mean, in the, in the sense of the general public. Those of us that are political junkies, you know, it's sort of like our Olympics, but it's becoming <laughs> less and less valuable. And I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's, it really is a television show, and it's you try and focus your message as carefully as possible. But it, and if you were if you were trying to construct that message, Ed, to, to deal with the Hispanic vote issue, which is a problem in the sense that Barack Obama in our poll is somewhere at six, like 65 percent among Hispanics. How do you do that? You don't have a you don't have a Marco Rubio on the ticket. Um, can you do anything about that in Florida, home to many Hispanics? Well, you have to, and I and I, and I would hope that that, that Rubio's performance, uh, who's a, who's an extraordinary speaker, uh, will excite a lot of people. Uh, and I, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, we have we have others that are that need to be highlighted. Uh, we certainly have a problem short term and long term with, with the Latino vote. Uh, equally as important, we have to make sure that women understand that we care very much about them and their issues. Uh, uh, and that takes some sensitivity on our part. Uh, you know, and I, and I think uh, the more effort you make and the more you focus on that, the better off you are. You know, is this, uh, is this a, a convention in which Republicans have to do um, a lot more on economic policy or economic themes more the key here? Well, I think the problem here is, is the people that are supporting Romney don't like Obama. Uh, we know that the president uh, and his people have, have sort of failed on getting the economy moving forward. I think the missing element here is what are we going to do to move the, move the ball ourselves? Uh, uh, Romney's 59-point 59 uh, 59 uh, document was, was not clear, was not, there was no magic words in there. Uh, and I think to a certain extent, uh, you know, trying to debate this out, and, and once again, it's not about, just about sound bites, but it's about is there a realistic plan? Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about small business, a lot of talk about how you basically, if you do reform the tax code, uh, how you're going to make that stimulate uh, the economy. Uh, those, are, those are things that I think you could talk about, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time doing it uh, in, the, in, the, in the big speeches. I think the big speeches are kind of getting a warmer feeling, as you said earlier, about Romney, his family, uh, his value system, which is extraordinary, and basically talk in terms of his leadership skills, and everybody else ought to be reinforcing that. Uh, you know, I'm saddened by, by the giving Trump time or giving anybody else that basically becomes a distraction. Uh, I don't see... I would never have done that. I don't see that as a political plus. Uh, I would take, uh, you know, some of our young governors uh, uh, and, and, and feature them. And this is still, in the end, an election about jobs, not the debt, not the deficit, right. and certainly not about social issues, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's all anybody cares about. You look poll after poll after poll. Uh, the number one issue is, is when you say economy, it means jobs. How do you get people back to work? 
and how do you basically create a stable environment that people that have jobs uh, are going to be able to maintain them and particularly young people that are coming out of college and, and, and even high schools uh, without the proper training or even with a great education and not being able to get jobs and so you got to create some hope that you know in two years or four years this is going to be better so Ed, finally since i've put you in charge of the world here i'm going to put you in charge of steering hurricane isaac some different direction can you handle that well obviously uh, 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 Prayer might work. Uh, uh, it, you know, it, it, Tampa's not been hit in a long, long time. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, as I said, uh, the good, the good Lord takes care and watches out for that. And uh, and I hope no one interprets it as a punishment for Republicans for not being as good a boys as <laughs> girls as they should. All right, we won't look at it that way. But I'm still going to take my rain slicker. Ed, thanks for joining take us care, today. My we really appreciate it.